Good evening, and welcome to English Lutheran Church, our third midweek Latin service, March 10th, 2021. People have been sharing a bit of their faith story each Wednesday during Lent. Uh, tonight we have Nikki Pinnell, who really needs no introduction because she's been around longer than many of us, but I'm looking forward to hearing from her. Please have your communion items available, and if there is more than one of you, uh, please designate one person to be your worship leader during <coughs> communion. Join Kristen Ahrens on Zoom at 7.45 p.m. for all ages for fellowship and discussion. That Zoom link was sent out on Friday night, along with the Zoom link for the after worship um, coffee hour on Zoom on Sundays. Thank you to those who are serving tonight, our technician Arthur, Brittany, Allie, Pastor Becky, of course, always, and Trevor. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine.
Thank you very much. It's a lovely piece. It's from our new Hindle supplement, All Creation Sings. And hopefully we'll get even more things from All Creation Sings in the months ahead. We're going to take a, a few moments just for silent prayer.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and the disciples came to Jerusalem, and Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. The Gospel of our Lord. And now we have Nikki sharing her faith story. I have fears. I have many fears. Freedom from fears. Now that's deep. I'm one of the lucky ones. I have that when I need it, but not because it comes naturally, but I have the tools to face my fears. I have prayer, I have faith, and I have my involvement in my faith community to help me. Growing up, I was surrounded by faith. I was raised Catholic. I remember going to church on Sunday morning, always sitting in the same pew. Sometimes when we were really little, we had to sit girl, parent, girl, parent, girl, because maybe we were naughty or we were giggly. Um, I remember Sunday mornings and Wednesday evening religion classes. I remember singing in the choir so I could sit with my friends. And I remember going to mass with Grandma Reardon at 6.30 a.m. during the summer as a teenager. I remember working side by side with um, relatives, serving funeral lunches. And I remember having a priest over for some special occasions on Sunday afternoon meals. I feel like some of my faith faith was caught and some of it was taught. I didn't realize when I was younger the impact being involved in a faith community would have on me. I sort of felt like I was doing what I was doing because I was supposed to do it, but I never minded it. It was part of my life. I didn't realize that that part of my life, that my parents were instilling this core value in me that would take me through the rest of my life. Faith. The first time I really remember faith impacting my life was when I got engaged. My husband was Lutheran and I was Catholic. Which church do we get married in? My husband and I explored different faith communities and determined that the Lutheran religion was a best fit for us. We would be married at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in my hometown. Now, my entire extended family in this rural Iowa community was Catholic. So fear set in. I had to tell my parents that I was getting married in the Lutheran church. I was so nervous driving to my dad's to tell him, but I was prepared for the conversation. I grew up justifying the decision, any decisions I had talking to my dad about the pros and cons. So I had my list. I was ready. I told my dad that I wanted to be married at Monona at the St. Paul's Lutheran church. I told him we wanted to start our life together in the same faith, and that I was joining the Lutheran Church. Much to my disappointment, he did not ask for my pros and cons list. He responded by saying, Nikki, I don't care where you get married or what religion you practice as long as you raise my grandchildren with faith. Love that man. Prayer. The first time I really remember prayer impacting my life is through a book I read about 16 years ago. Power of a Praying Parent changed my life, and I'm so grateful for God for putting it into my hands when he did. At the time, I had a 10-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a newborn baby. I was working at English Lutheran, had been for about two years, and my husband was working with American Airlines and managing both La Crosse and Green Bay, so he was gone for part of the week and left me feeling kind of overwhelmed and alone at times. So I opened up this book. 
The first chapter was about becoming a praying parent. And after I read statements like, we must declare ourselves to be in full partnership with God, or none of us are perfect, so how can we be the perfect parents? It's going to be the praying parent that makes the difference. Or the key is not trying to do it all ourselves, all at once, but rather turn to the expert parent, our God, our Father, for help. Then take one step at a time. We must cover every detail of our child's life in prayer. So after reading those statements, I approached Pastor Mark and talked to him about offering this book to the congregation as a book study. I really felt like I needed to talk to people about what I was reading, even though I was only in the first chapter. I just like to process through all of this great information that I was getting. And I thought there's got to be other moms out there that would benefit. I ended up with 18 women signing up for this study, and I divided the groups into two and did um, held two sessions per week for eight weeks. I was so energized by this, the women in our community with faith, all of these women raising children in this faith community. I offered to facil facilitate another book study. Eight women chose to continue that. As this small group of women and I have been working through book studies, Bible studies, marital workshops, and being prayer partners for 16 years. We are a solid group of women and raising our kids, talking through everything um, from marital issues to job changes to issues with our children to anything. We have been there because of this book study offered in this place. I have learned the power of prayer through these women, and I've extended that prayer circle in, to countless others in our church. I'm not afraid to ask someone to pray for me, and I welcome specific prayer requests. I have learned the truth behind Matthew 18, for when two or more are gathered in my name, I am there with them. When my children need a little extra prayer, I have my team of prayer warriors that I have on speed dial or speed text. I can just text them right away. Just a few weeks ago, I received a text from my older son um, about listening to him about his challenges that he was up against that coming week. I told him I would pray for him, and I asked him if there's anything that I can do. He responded by texting me, maybe you could screenshot this text and send it out to those prayer circle people that you know. So this is faith to me being caught. It was a proud mom moment that he understood what was going on. My involvement in church. Both my faith and my prayer life have circled around being involved in my faith community. I have been involved in one way or another for as long as I can remember. Overall, the greatest impact on my life have been those relationships that have formed and those people that have supported me in this faith community. It's hard for me to describe the value that it gives to me, walking into this place and seeing a group of other people that share the same values and know that they are there to support me if they need to or when I need it. An example of this is when my son transitioned. We prayed for both him to be accepted by this congregation and for our family to be accepted for supporting him and because this community has, has impacted our lives. We were advised by a therapist to start by confiding in five or six people in various circles of friends. We had to tell our story and learn um, how to respond to different questions and formulate our answers. It was tough, but it was the best advice that we could have received, having to divulge something so personal happening in our family. There was fear that we would be judged or lose friends or lose our faith community. We relied on our faith and prayer. We chose people and we began our conversations. It was tough, like I said, but you know what? We felt nothing but support from this faith community. We could come into church on a Sunday morning and we could look around the fellowship hall or the sanctuary and know that a few people had our backs as more and more people grew to learn what was happening in our family. I have built many solid relationships here and have never once to my face felt ashamed of being who I am, loving who I love, who my family are, or who I support. 
I don't know how I would have made it through any situations without this faith community. In closing, I just want to remind all of you that I have fears. I have many fears, but my faith in God, my prayer life, and my involvement in this faith community has helped me navigate those fears and to move past into, into peace. I hope you can recognize those things that you have in your toolbox of life. God bless.
At this time, we will receive our tithes and offerings, and I'd just like to remind you of our Lenten journey this year. We are helping to raise funds for Neighbor to Neighbor, which is a group that helps food banks, et cetera, in the area. So if you can help in any way, we hope that you will do so. During the offering, um, we will be singing, There is a Balm in Gilead, number 614. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, 
we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with our church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise and glorify your holy name. <clears throat> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you during this time for either you or your designated uh, communion leader to share the Lord's Supper. And as you give each other the bread, say that the body of Christ given for you. And as you share your wine or your grape juice, say the blood of Christ shed for you. So here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Come to the table of mercy and joy. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms of making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn this evening is number 999, Your Canopy of Vigil Lights. Thank you. 
We'll continue with the final blessing. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path. And now go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.